Welcome to part 3 of renovating a vintage twin tangy type model steam engine. In this one I'm going to be dismantling the engine in its entirety. It's time to take the whole thing apart, repair any parts that need repairing, clean up any parts that need cleaning, paint any parts that need painting and finally put it all back together again. I've already changed the piston rings for silicon rubber piston rings so I'm hoping that there's not many more things wrong with the engine. Here I'm taking off the connecting rod and refitting the little nuts so I don't lose the end part and then I'm putting it in a plastic box so I know where it is. Here at a higher speed I'm removing the other connecting rod. I do it at a higher speed so you don't slip into a coma watching it. Here I'm removing the top cap from one of the main bearings and on this main bearing the oiler moves out of the way which is quite useful because it lets me in with my socket. One main bearing top cap removed, now it's time to do the other side. This engine looks quite well made and I'm quite happy with it so far. I've not found anything horrible about it yet. Other than in the previous episode where you can see there's a couple of broken bolts, but I'll fix that in due course. Before I can remove the crankshaft altogether, I'm going to disconnect the eccentric rods from the valve spindles. And here I'm undoing the main bearing cap at the other side. And now I'm going to remove the eccentric rod from the other side as well. The eccentric rod at this side is fastened to the pump plunger. It's not a good design in my opinion, and eccentric is working hard enough to move the slide valves without having to move a water pump plunger. But that's the way it is with this engine. And it's only a brass engine anyway, so it's not really meant to do proper hard work. I found it easier to remove the pump plunger with the eccentric rod and then remove the pin separately. The next thing to go into the plastic box is the steam inlet manifold. The manifold has an oiler attached to it and this is loose so we'll have to fix that before it goes back together. The two union nuts seem to take forever to remove but eventually off they come. Then it's time to look underneath and remove the union nut from the exhaust pipe. The time has come when the entire casting has to be removed from the wooden mounting board. The main engine castings are held to the mounting board using 6BA nuts and bolts. These are quite easy to remove and what was interesting was there was an extra one on one side which if you can contain your excitement I will show you in a minute. But before we get to that bit I have to remember to completely remove the union nut for the exhaust and once all the nuts and bolts are removed I can lift the bed plates off the mounting board. They're in a bit of a state and they're very hairy of these mounting boards. It's been around for a long time as this engine. And there is evidence that these two castings have been removed at an earlier time. There are some marks on the wooden part if you look at the end of them. And as I mentioned previously, here is the extra stud and nut that holds one side of the cylinder and main casting to the mounting board. It's not present on the other side. It's only present on the side with the water pump. For a bit of mechanical reinforcement. The first main casting was easy to remove from the mounting board but this one's not quite so easy. This took quite a bit of doing. To break the seal of the casting against the wood I'm using a very sharp knife which I'm tapping with the hammer and I'm not putting a lot of pressure on. I'm not hitting it very hard. The camera makes it sound like I am but I really am being very gentle with this. It's a short sharp shock that's required and this will loosen the casting which is firmly stuck at the moment to the wooden board. But once the seal of oil and paint is broken, it lifts off quite easily. What a mess. You can see the paint underneath it that's stuck to both the casting and to the wood. I'm going to use a metal ruler to scrape some of the debris away. This base is going to need some special treatment and I will have to dismantle it further to do a proper job. More about that in the next episode. For now, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.